Thank you, Professor Shahid. Good afternoon. My pleasure to be here today at IAM Cori Cause for this, this seminar as part of my one month uh, stint uh, at IMK. So I already had three quarters from IMK, my first quarter, Sumit Mitra, then uh, Deba, then Ananda Kutnunita, and then fourth quarter, Seizures. So that way, um, collaborations with IMK faculty members are an ongoing process for me, and, and, and uh, that gives me motivation and inspiration to uh, work closely with uh, the IAMK community. I've been here for three weeks, and officially my stint here ends tomorrow, but I'm coming back on Monday and spending one or two more days on Tuesday and Wednesday, and, and then I, I leave IAMK. So uh, my um, presentation today consists of two parts. The first part, I'm going to introduce four special issues that we have launched uh, uh, for different journals and expectations and requirements. And then I would specifically talk about uh, seven types of systematic review articles. I've been uh, serving as an editor on a daily basis for a couple of journals. In addition to my daily role as uh, associate editor or senior editor of those journals, uh, I took initiative to launch uh, some special issues for Journal of Business Research, Services Industries Journal, Journal of Strategic Marketing, and European Business Review during this academic year. And uh, I I am sure you might have had a chance to take a look at the calls for papers sent by Shahid two weeks ago. I would like to focus because uh, sometimes when you read the calls for papers on the journal website, you get 50% clarity. But when I have a chance to uh, introduce these special issues, probably you will have some questions and uh, I can try to answer those questions. That's the advantage of introducing the special issues because Last month, I mean in June, I, was, uh, I spent a month in uh, Europe and I visited three European universities in three different countries and I, I did the same presentation and, and I found that there were a lot of responses from the audience and, and which will uh, uh, help the audience as well as the journals to, to understand the expectations and prepare the papers. So the first special issue that I'm introducing today is a flagship special issue for Journal of Business Research. That's what the Journal of Business Research chief editor says. This is a flagship special issue compared to any other special issue. This is because this is special review issue, special issue for review articles. Journal of Business Research current impact factor is 4.1, which used to be less than three. So 4.1 impact factor, this is this impact factor is much higher than several FT journals. So even IMK might have to rewrite the rules of FT looking at the impact factor. And uh, uh, CNRS, uh, France ranked JBR as A star, but in ABDC it is A, and JBR has applied for A star status in ABDC, which is under revision currently. And this special review issue, he called for review articles uh, of, of different types. And uh, we have focus for marketing and international business subjects for this special issue. So it need to have direct or indirect link with the marketing, or it can be international business. These are the two subjects that we handle as part of this special issue. Suppose in case if we have a topic which has some link with marketing or some link with international business, those kind of topics are also welcome, but it needs to have some link. If it is completely purely on finance, you cannot encourage those kind of papers for this special issue so, because we have some focus. But in case, uh, but we would be considering interdisciplinary topics as well in case if it has some indirect linkage with, with uh, marketing or 
international business kind of subjects. For example, something on entrepreneurship, which you can link with marketing or those kind of, you know, some interdisciplinary topics are also welcome. And uh, yeah, so as announced on the JBR website, this special <coughs> issue will focus on theme-based review, theory-based review, structure review, framework-based review, meta-analysis, and bibliometric reviews. And this one, submission window will be open uh, for two months in January and February. Sorry, this is not 19, this is 20, it's a typo. So, uh, January, February 2020. I believe the FT will restructure the list because uh, impact factor, some of the FT journals are less than 2.5. So, so a lot of journals have these days four plus impact factor. So uh, I am also expecting that JBR will apply for FT inclusion in, in the near future. And uh, the next special issue, services industries journal, this is also a review issue. So out of four special issues that I'm introducing, only two are exclusively for review articles and two other special issues are not uh, for review articles. So this one is also a review issue, so I put it together with the JBR because this one also consider a review article. This one is, uh, dead, this one has deadline, August 20, so just 20 more days, and, and we will close the submissions on August 20 for the Service Industries General Special Review issue. I also serve as editor for all the review articles for this journal on daily basis, and uh, Services Industries Journal has over 40 years of track record, and uh, its one year back factor is about uh, two, and the UK ABS rank is two, ABDC rank, current rank is B, but uh, Chief Editor has applied for a rank in the ABDC since ABDC called for journals uh, to represent based on number of submissions, based on number of uh, whatever impact factor, and though ABDC will announce the new list uh, in, in October. So we'll have to wait and see what will be the rank of or this journal in ABDC in the next list. And uh, we call for review articles uh, on specific themes, thematic reviews, which can be directly or indirectly related to the services sector. Which services industries journal is an interdisciplinary journal, so it considers articles uh, broadly related to the services, it can be strategy, it can be marketing, it can be HR issues in services. Uh, some kind of connection is required for service industries general. So it can be international business in services, any, any, any of those kind of link, uh, like outsourcing services, I think that just works in that area too. Uh, those kind of, uh, yeah, so it's more interdisciplinary or, or it's open for, uh, researches across the discipline that way. It's not confining to just marketing. And uh, yeah, for example, it can be sector specific review or it can be theme specific review or it can be a uh, theory based uh, review article as well. Yeah, just keep in mind only 20 more days for deadline for this special issue of this journal. The third one, third one is more interesting and we welcome all types of articles. So it's not a literature review special issue, the third one. So this is a European business review. European business review special issue is having a title, uh, New and Novel Paradigms in India and China. European business review special issue on new and novel paradigms in business in India or China has a deadline September 25. Call for papers are on the general website. European business review has a rank of UK BS2, ABDC Australia B, and uh, size score of European business review, the current size score, score per size score, it is 2.7. And this implies that the next year's impact factor will be around 1.7 for this journal. And, and the rationale for this special issue is China and India are most populous emerging market. China and India boast numerous innovative firms and business savvy entrepreneurs. Chinese and Indian firms are actively internationalizing their businesses. And Western multinationals constantly get inspirations through working with China and India. 
So all this uh, makes China and India very attractive from the point of view of uh, uh, organizations from all over the world. And, and uh, we would like to encourage submissions focusing on something new and novel. That's why the title of the special issue is New and Novel Paradigms. Suppose if you are working on Bible or Quran or Bhagavad Gita, we cannot consider those kind of submissions because those have been there for centuries. So we need a topic which is more contemporary to be considered for this special issue. So it can be an empirical article, it can be a thematic contemporary conceptual article, or it can be uh, you know, an article using qualitative methods. Methods, you know, we are open for all types of methods, all types of article for this European Business Review special issue, but it has to be on a contemporary relevant topic. Yeah, so I'm the main guest editor for this special issue, and I do have two more co-editors from Australian University for this special issue. So the fourth one I would like to announce, Journal of Strategic Marketing. Journal of Strategic Marketing has an air rank in the Australian ABDC list. So this special issue has a title, Research in Strategic Marketing Past and Future, and the deadline is November 2019. So this, uh, yeah, three more months, and uh, yeah, uh, the, the type of article that we would like to encourage for this special issue is the article that focuses on new models, new measures, new methods. So why we put it this way is that, uh, suppose if you actually look at 1,000 papers published uh, in different journals, 900 or 920 or 930 articles are of replete and recycled types. People are not really thinking about, people are not really spending time to come with the original work. People are just trying to replicate different studies. So we like to encourage research in the area of strategic management as well as marketing or blended research or hybrid research but with original work, we really need to encourage original work because the field of business management in general do not have a lot of original theoretical model. For example, I can tell you, there is something called springboard model or springboard theory. So this was published as an editorial article. And since the field of international business doesn't have many theories and models, people just recyclingly use the same theory, institutional theory, or transaction theory, or just four or five theories, and springboard theory got 5,000 plus citations, which was not published as a refereed article, which was published in an editorial article. So that means the field doesn't have enough uh, original theoretical models, original theories, original models. So that's why this special issue of general of strategic marketing and such papers get citations. Such papers get, you know, such papers are the most impactful papers if you actually do uh, analyze the most cited authors in the world or most downloaded authors in the world. So that's why we would like to encourage new models or articles focusing on new innovative models that can serve as platform for future research in the subject area so that others can use it for their research. We don't want recycled models. We want original models. That's why the title is, 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 is New Models. It can be reviews also. New measures, new scale development. So we encourage scale development papers for this. And new methods. So, and you have to also explain how your new model or how your new measure will help future research. And, and this uh, special issue broadly encompasses two subject areas strategy and marketing. Before I go into the review articles, I would like to encourage uh, questions in case if you have any question on these four special issues. Any, any doubts, or is it clear? Okay, then I will go ahead because you don't have much time. So, my main topic for today's uh, seminar is seven types of review articles. 
Sometimes when we do PhD thesis preparation, or I mean, when we try to write PhD thesis, we don't get clarity about uh, how to develop the literature review chapter as a research paper and publish. I didn't have clarity in, in the beginning. So I started teaching in the PhD program. So when I started teaching in the PhD program five years ago, or it's almost six, six years ago, so I tried to learn, I tried to read different types of research papers. Before that, I used to read only empirical papers before I started teaching in the PhD program. So I thought and their research is uh, centered around on empirical papers, which uh, many PhD students or many professors still believe, those who are not really teaching. So I ended up spending two semesters to read different types of research papers from different journals as part of my preparation to teach in the PhD program. And uh, I learned a lot of new things. I learned uh, new insights, and, and uh, I also looked at uh, the journal impact factor, most downloaded articles, most uh, cited articles, most cited authors, and I, and I found review articles and theory articles are the most impactful, are the most useful, and are the most cited. And uh, so this, I also found, this is kind of secret of success for many journals. This is kind of secret of success for most cited authors. And this is kind of secret of success of most downloaded authors as well. So I try to learn more about it, and I try to specialize in that area to some extent, in addition to my empirical papers. And uh, uh, yeah, and I also took, uh, I mean, I, I, I published uh, um, eight uh, review articles so far. And, and uh, seven out of eight are in ABDCA journals. And, and uh, those review articles are also getting good number of downloads these days. And I try to look at the methodology, how people are writing or how people are publishing review articles. And recently, um, I edited a special issue for International Business Review, focusing only on review articles. We got 72 submissions. I learned a lot of things after screening those 72 submissions as well, what kind of review articles people submit. I would try to share some of those experiences. And uh, uh, since I have time constraints, I would like to focus on uh, some specific aspects of review articles and would try to give you some time to ask questions as well. Importance, when we think the importance of review articles sometimes in the early stages of our career, if you haven't read classic review articles, sometimes you fail to understand. Even I fail to understand why this review article is important in the beginning of my career as well. So even uh, one of the journal editors also tried to disagree with me when I tried to share with him the, the importance of review article because he has never published a review article. If you have never published a review article, you don't understand how review article help others, how review articles get citations and those kind of things. So importance of a review article, a subject advances when studies are designed in a way that builds logically based on the findings of prior studies. And uh, for example, I have clear evidence of a journal called International Journal of Management Reviews. This is a journal from British Academy of Management. This is just a 10-year-old journal. While journals with 40-plus-year-old track record still survive, you're still trying, struggling to increase the impact factor to more than three. It's a lot of uh, journals with 40 plus track, year, track record has an impact factor of two or 2.5 or a 1.5. A 10 year old journal called International Journal of Management Review from British Academy of Management uh, has an impact factor of six plus, which ranks them among the top journals with high impact factor. And, and this is uh, an evidence for how they publish only review articles. And uh, just because of they focus only on review articles, they have very high number of citations, downloads, and their impact factor is six plus. And uh, I will also tell you some other uh, examples as well. Uh, Gerald George, former Academy of Management uh, chief editor, I looked at his Google College citations. And he has three, four classic review articles, which has uh, uh, 4,000, 3,000 kind of citations. And out of his, uh, when he became the chief editor of Academy of Management Journal, he had 8,000 citations. And uh, now he has much more. 
because if you serve as chief editor, a lot of people cite your papers as well. So, um, uh, but uh, at that time, 5,000 plus out of 8,000 citations of Professor George was only from review articles. And Constantine Kastik is chief editor of Journal of International Marketing. I think his term is just getting over, almost over. So he has more than 12,000 citations. Out of 12,000 citations, 7,000 citations just come from review articles. So, uh, yeah, so purpose of a review article is to provide ideas and directions for budding researchers to undertake novel research instead of doing a replete and recycle type of research. So this is, uh, I mean, the, the, the directions you need to, a review article is not a plain vanilla write-up. You have to understand your review article should lead to uh, providing really useful ideas and directions for future research based on research gaps. Otherwise, you are not going to get citations. If you don't write a classic review article, I have to withdraw the statement that I already made. You're not going to get citations if you don't write it in a scientific way. So, but if you write in a scientific way, you will get a lot of downloads and citations. Topic selection, the first point I would like to focus is topic selection. If you are going to develop a review article, you need to select a topic for your review article, looking at whether there is a review on the same topic or a similar topic published in the recent years. When we announced the call for papers for International Business Review and General of Business Research Services Industries General, we specifically included a sentence, if there is a recent review on the same topic, we would, like, we would not like to encourage those topics, review article on those topics to submit that, because uh, there's no point in publishing the same thing or old wine and new bottle in a different way. So you need to have a topic where there is no review published during last three years. So if some review is there on the same topic seven years ago, eight years ago, that's all right. So uh, this you can check on Google Scholar how many reviews are available on the same topic. And editors and reviewers do not want to consider reviews on topics when there is another comprehensive review already available. If there is no comprehensive review is available, you can still uh, publish your review in a good journal, so because uh, there could be sometimes people have published some some reviews which are not really comprehensive. In that case, there is still scope for publishing a review on the same topic. So, but in case if there is a very comprehensive review, you can still try to publish. But if an editor or reviewer already aware that there is a comprehensive recent review available on the same topic, they may not consider your review. Uh, for example, uh, social entrepreneurship. An MDI faculty approached me to call a review article on social entrepreneurship, and she sent me some stuff in which she herself has found that there are 10 articles, 10 review articles on social entrepreneurship published during the last six years in different journals, which should include one or two review articles on social entrepreneurship published last year and the year before as well. So uh, that means there is not scope for another review article on social entrepreneurship in that case. And IIT Karakpur PhD student sent me something on service recovery, another review article. So there are at least three, four review articles on service recovery published during the last four or five years. In that case, also the same, same, same um, uh, issue goes there as well. International franchising, I published an, a review on international franchising on general of business research. And uh, immediately after that, another researcher who is an active researcher in the area of franchising, he came out with a review, and I was co-editing a special issue for small business economics uh, two years ago uh, with Professor Alan Fayola from France, and that time we got a submission on international franchising. We still sent it out for blind review. We sent it out to Professor Altinai, who is number one researcher in, in franchising area, and his comments were he had already seen uh, our franchising review um, in which uh, we had cited his articles uh, many times because he has at least 10 articles in the area of franchising. And we sent it to him, the other review article, we got it for his comments, and, and he rejected, he, he clearly mentioned he, uh, that if there is another review, a very comprehensive review available, then there is no scope for uh, replete uh, uh, publication in, in, a, in, a, in a premier journal. So you may be in a position to publish in a low rank journal, even if there is another review, but premier journals, you might find it uh, difficult because most of the reviewers of premier journals are, uh, uh, you know, researchers in the same area. So they, they, the most articles go to expert researchers in the same area. 
And um, topic selection, you have to keep that point. Method, method of selecting journals or method of selecting articles should be included in your sample when you prepare a review article. You have to keep in mind two important points. General selection criteria and article selection criteria. If you look at uh, AMR review and AMS, uh, AMR Academy of Management review and uh, Academy of Marketing Science review, they, they publish more conceptual article, which are also type of review article. So those kind of articles, most of them don't really have a clear cut general selection criteria, but they also would like to see that you don't cite from some unknown journals and all. So, but if you try, if you want to publish a classic review article in a journal like Journal of Management or International Business Review or Journal of Business Research, those kind of premier journals, you really need to follow general selection criteria. So, for example, your general selection criteria can be one of this. You, you know, one of this means I mentioned here five or six criteria. You should have criteria, you know, it can be, for example, you can say, relevant journal in that subject area which are listed on Web of Science. Web of Science, I mentioned SSCI slash SSCI, it's the same thing. So that means journals listed on SSCI. So you will not cite any article or you will not input any article from journals which are not there on Web of Science in case if you choose that criteria. So you don't have necessarily choose that criteria. That is one of the accepted or established criteria to select journals uh, for carrying out, uh, I mean, when you prepare a review, when you decide the general selection criteria, you can either use that criteria, otherwise you can, this is the second criteria. You are shortlisting journals, and those journals should have minimum one impact factor. So, like, I, I have a review article on internationalization, uh, which published in International Marketing Review, uh, in January, yeah, it's about seven months old review article. And in that international marketing review article, our general selection criteria was uh, journals with at least one plus impact factor. So, which means uh, we only selected journals in, in, in the subject area. So it is, it is on internationalization. So that means that we, we had some journals uh, from marketing some journals uh, from uh, international business and uh, those kind of related international business and marketing. We combined journals from those two subject areas. And, and uh, but we selected, we shortlisted journals with one plus impact factor. We did not consider articles from journals which doesn't have at least one impact factor for that. But we still got about 146 articles to review for that review article. And uh, so you can choose any of those criteria. Instead of, suppose if we had gone for SSCI, all SSCI listed journals, maybe instead of 146 articles, we would have got uh, 246 articles, or maybe 346 articles. So, so, that, that, so you have to look at uh, comprehensively, and you need to decide uh, general selection criteria. And it can be, I have also seen, ABS2 and above. So there's a review article in Management and Organization Review, so uh, authors of that paper has used ABS2 and above. So in, in the relevant subject area, so you collect articles from journals which have at least ABS2 and above ranking. So that's uh, their criteria. ABDCB and above. So, so you need to have some criteria, uh, uh, you know, and um, or uh, I mentioned FT journals only, but FT journals only would not make any sense. So, because uh, there are only few journals in some, some subject areas, suppose if you select only marketing, there will be only five journals. So, it's not easy to do a review just based on FT journals. So, because if you don't, if, you, if, you, if FT journal doesn't uh, uh, accept your paper, you will not be in a position to publish that paper anywhere else. I had a very, very similar experience from Australia, a professor from an Australian university with her PhD student. Uh, they, Drafted a review article. None of them have ever. None of them have published any review article before. So they they, they did not use the criteria of FT. But they, in Australia, they don't care FT or non-FT. But they care S, R, and A in Australia. So even all Australian universities have a notice board. If the, the faculty publishes in A or S, R, they will display their paper in notice board. 
So that's what I had seen when I visited half a dozen Australian university. I had a chance to visit uh, uh, a lot of universities in Melbourne and Musbain uh, two years ago. So if all, all of them have a notice board and a star ABDC they will display. So like you have a notice board here. I don't know whether you have any criteria to display. So, I mean not here, so in front of your campus, right? So that, that, that kind of thing is there in Australian universities and ASTAR, they display. So, uh, but what I'm trying to say is that that, that uh, paper, Australian authors, what they did, they selected papers only from ASTAR journals. And they only got five journals. And they wrote to me an email that now they want me to co-author and help them to publish this somewhere in any A journal because they already submitted to five ASTAR journals and all five ASTAR journals rejected the paper. So, and they have citations only from those five ASTAR journals. That means their article selection, general selection criteria is just five journals, five ASTAR journals. Uh, no other citation from no other journal, they had simply discounted all the A journals and all. So, and they, no, no, no journal will submit, consider that article if they, if they haven't considered articles from those A journals. So, and I told immediately that you don't have any citations from any other journal, just five journals, this is not going to work. So, I, I replied to them, back, replied them back and, and uh, uh, that way because they just, just by collecting articles from five journals, uh, if you are unable to publish in those five journals, no other journal will publish. So that is, that, 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 so you need to, you need to, Scopus, Scop but Scopus is a very vast, and Scopus has a lot of journals. So is, I have also like, out of 72 review articles, I received as editor of special review issue of International Business Review, uh, there were about 25 articles, authors that use Scopus as general selection criteria. Scopus means about uh, 16 or 1800 business journals. So Scopus uh, means it's too much. Uh, it's like UGC list, you know. I mean, uh, if you select articles from Scopus, that means you are bound to miss some articles, some journals, because you cannot search uh, 1500 or 1800 journal website to source articles. It becomes too much. And uh, you will get 1000 or 2000 plus articles also. So that, that is too much. FT is only for, so, F, so Forget about FT, forget about Scopus. This is my suggestion. So think about in between. Both FT is extreme, Scopus is extreme. Scopus is okay when I went to some private institution, they were talking about Scopus. So Scopus is okay for them, but Scopus is not okay for a good journal. So, but, but I mean, because it, but if you, if you think that you can survey all the Scopus journals and all, it's fine. It is, I'm not saying it is, it is a bad idea, it's not wrong but you have to make sure that you look at each journal website, you know, each journal which has a listing on Scopus, it becomes too much work for you. It is possible to do it, but, but I have done one paper uh, based on Scopus also, one of my review article, but after doing that that, that, that really took my time. So I felt like uh, my tummy, I did not have time to go to the gym or, any, or even to go for a walk when I did that one, so it's just too much work. So uh, then I did not do any other review based on Scopus after that. So yeah, so you need to have a criteria in between, not Scopus, not FT. This is my suggestion, but uh, you don't have to always agree with me. You can have your own view as well. Article search criteria, you also need to have Article selection, so how do you select articles? So you can search on the database, uh, like Web of Science database, you, or any other SSCI, you know, so I mean, that is Web of Science. And, and in addition to that, in order to cross check, you know, to make sure that you don't miss relevant article, you can also search on each journal website, journals that you selected, uh, and, and uh, so that you can uh, make sure that you don't miss any article. Uh, because a review article means it has to be a comprehensive re review. You should not miss any relevant article. So that way you also need to have keywords. Suppose, uh, let's say you are going to do a review on brand equity. You need to have at least half a dozen keywords, individual keywords and combined keywords, and then you need to use those keywords to find relevant articles. So that is very important. And uh, 
you can have a how do you select article once you have journals once you shortlisted the criteria for journals you need to have all articles relevant to your topic so you can use either this criteria or this criteria the first criteria is you you select keywords and your keywords should appear either in title or in abstract or in keywords of those articles otherwise your keywords in article text or abstract suppose if you choose a second criteria you might get 1000 plus articles because your key one of your keyword appearing in anywhere in the text that means there is a chance that you get lot of articles thousands of articles but if you choose the first criteria the number of article you might get maybe 70 or 80 the article is really focusing on that keywords so first probably to begin with you can use the first criteria and if you don't get enough article using the first criteria you can think about the second criteria because some some topics suppose the topic is relatively new so something on online business and all is relatively new topic last 10 years so in that case if you just use the first criteria to select article something suppose it's, uh, i think rahul is doing on online reviews so in that case uh, you know rahul cannot find articles which published on 20 years ago so if he cannot find a lot of articles then he might have to use the uh, criteria the second criteria but if somebody is doing something on foreign investment which is there for last 50 years maybe uh, the first criteria will work so depending upon the topic you need you need to decide the article selection criteria yeah so this is uh, some experience sharing this is a very recent experience for international business review special issue uh, which we might launch it as a biannual special issue for ibr in case if it works uh, in future and uh, out of 72 submission 20 plus didn't have general selection criteria which means they had some citations from top journals they also had some citation from imt gasiaba journal and for school of management journals so those kind of and and some of them cite uh, some textbooks which is published by excel books and those kind of things so those kind of uh, citations in a classic review article will not work because that 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 creates negative image you really need to have general selection criteria and uh, yeah, so I mentioned here, reference list in good at books, local journals, because editors, in case if editor is sincere, they look at the reference list, they can easily figure out whether you have actually, uh, uh, you know, gone through the articles, relevant articles, what kind of journals you referred, and all those kind of things. Title of a classic review article, better short titles, uh, like I mentioned three here, Master's Marketing, a Review and Research Agenda, Randy Kitty Research, a Review and Future Agenda, International Franchising, a Review and Research Agenda. So why I mentioned Research Agenda here is, instead of Research Agenda, probably you can also use Direction for Future Research, but Research Agenda is more crystal clear. So one of the purposes of a review article is also highlight research gaps and provides direction for future research with reference to methods, constructs, variables, context, and theories and all those kind of things. So in case if you are unable to provide clear directions for future research, your review article will not get cited. Your review article would not be useful for others. You have to really find out research gaps and provide and set future research agenda. Sample size and time period. At least 50 articles should be reviewed in a classic review article. And it could be 50 to 500, depending upon the topic and number of article can be 50 to 500. Suppose it's a topic which is, uh, which, which is a relatively new or novel topic. So 50, 50 article would be okay. But if a topic is very, very old, and you will find a lot of articles, so you are likely to have more articles in that case. Time period of publication to be covered in a classic review article, minimum 10 years, it can go up to 50 years. So there is a very interesting review article on uh, exporting, so which, is, which covers 50 years. I did a review article uh, out of my eight uh, classic review articles I published uh, um, 
you know so different articles have different time period i have a review my minimum time period for all, all my review articles is minimum is 15 15 to 45 so some review articles i did two decades some three, three decades but minimum is 15 years so 50 last if it is 15 years last 15 years if it is 30 years last 30 years if it is 50 years last 50 years so you need to have suppose uh, you know you, you need to have some rational to justify why you choose last 10 years or last 20 years suppose it's a new topic 10 years is enough i mean it, it, because the, the research starts only uh, 10 years before right so the topic is very new something on let's say i cloud research and those kind of things i cloud is relatively new right so you cannot do a review on i cloud based on last 20 years because there was nothing called i cloud 20 years ago so another suggestion is focus on findings of prior studies this is what many phd supervisors forget to tell phd students because uh, sometimes phd supervisors are everywhere busy so like two months ago i got an email from delhi one of the student wrote to me that my professor is so busy can you please help me to guide uh, me to complete my phd because my professor is supervising nine or 10 students especially in india with 1.2 billion people uh, you know i don't know about uh, IIMs, but uh, I was surprised this time when I arrived uh, in India. My first invitation was from IIT Delhi, which was uh, they invited me before I landed in India. So I booked uh, uh, my 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 trip uh, with a stopgap of half a day in Delhi, and I went to IIT Delhi. They had 60 PhD students. So 10 years ago, they had only six PhD students from six to 60, and Christ University in Bangalore from zero to 150, they have 150 PhD students. so they did not have any phd student 5 years ago now 150 so you are going to compete with all these people so uh what i'm trying to say is but but why i am saying is that supervisors when they supervise 10 or 15 students in america professors supervise only one or two students at the same time so they have time to closely work with the students so in india when supervisors don't have enough time especially if they're supervising several students they forget to tell you that you have to focus on findings so you need to focus on findings otherwise your study will not be useful so you have to compare the findings of prior studies if you don't compare the findings of prior studies i mentioned the findings in capital letter here because otherwise you will forget tomorrow right so findings are important and you can also prepare a table highlighting studies with similar or same findings which is very important otherwise if you don't have a table then uh, you know so you cannot really show that you are focusing on findings and research gaps and direction for future research identification of research gaps based on widely used theories methods constructs or variables and context uh, this is a very interesting point from my point of view and i also found it uh, interesting when i did this presentation as part of imes conference in university in prague czech republic this is a european union conference i was there in may last week and i did this presentation as part of that conference and uh, one of the lady professors uh, who came from another european country uh, she friended me on facebook after my presentation next day and i looked at her facebook profile page and she had a photo of this one so i was surprised why she put this photo so and she also wrote to me this is the most important slide in your presentation so, so that's why she she found it you know and why she found it interesting because identification research gaps based on widely used theories what are the widely used theories in this field what are the widely used methods what are the widely used constructs of variables and what are the widely used industry contexts or what are the widely used country contexts whatever the topic that you have whatever the thematic area you have for for conducting a review and and i mentioned that tmcc criteria so acronym for all these things and you need to create one table for widely used uh, theories you need to create another table for widely used methods you can create another table for widely used variables in that area and widely so you need to create tables for this so that it becomes a structured and systematic review and you have to also find suppose in case is the same regression logistic regression is used in, by 90% of researchers in this field then you have to also mention that everybody is using logistic regression that means it has become recycled you have to suggest what are the other possible methods to use in in this area so that is the purpose of doing this analysis or doing this review suppose if everybody is using the same variable everybody is using technology adoption model that means term has become obsolete so you need to find out what percentage of research is done 
using terms. Suppose if you're doing information technology research or something on that, uh, you know, so you need to look at those things or a lot of people are using institutional theory in international business. I, I would say that institutional theory has become obsolete. So you have to suggest what are the other theories possible to do research in international business that way or service quality and services marketing. So this is uh, important. And I mentioned 20 or 25 percentage weightage should be for directions for future research. So this has to be based on this, uh, uh, this, this point that I'm talking ideally. And now I would, try to, I would try to quickly classify these review articles into seven types. Structured review articles, structured review effectiveness of celebrity endorsement. So most of the meta-analysis papers have a relationship testing. I mean, you collect uh, papers that use, that has a focus on cause and effect or relationship testing, a dependent variable, independent variable on a specific phenomena, and you select 60 or 70 papers or 80 papers that has a specific focus, and then you use a meta-analysis software, software like Stata or uh, Metafor, uh, Meta Excel, Meta Essential. This is also type of review article, but it's a different type of review article. And uh, review with theoretical or testable proposition, this is the seventh type of review article. So most articles in AMS review or AMR uh, falls in this category. So they, they uh, instead of hypothesis, you know, empirical articles are always based on hypothesis, and this type of review articles are based on propositions. So, uh, you derive propositions, but those propositions should be ideally theoretical or testable. Testable means future researchers should be in a position to use your proposition as testable hypothesis in their studies. So you, the, the proposition that you craft need to be scientific because you have to understand why you craft those propositions. Because if you derive propositions which are testable type, a lot of future researchers will cite your paper, your paper will get citations. I wish one day IAMs will introduce a system where IAMs will reward the researchers based on citations as well. So uh, maybe, yeah, so, so that we will have more, more original thought process in research. Some, some papers I mentioned here with this kind of, uh, but uh, look at AMS review or AMR, a lot of papers falls in this category. And review focusing on theory developments, this is a similar, I mean, the seven, I mentioned it as seven, so the other one, the, it is similar to the, the, the first, uh, slide, the, the previous slide, so, uh, you know, so it, it, that means you don't use any empirics, but uh, you, your review, the aim, the, the purpose of review is to develop or propose uh, theory in your review, so like Springboard, they, 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 they reviewed articles and they developed uh, or they proposed this uh, theory. Uh, so likewise, uh, you can find this kind of articles also. Yeah, so it's uh, almost uh, 5.30, so maybe if you have any question, I'd be happy to answer. You can do that, but in case uh, if you have a lot of uh, very, very interesting tables, if you also add propositions, it becomes too much. But if you can, you can do that. But you can mix. You can have a proposition hybrid approach, but uh, you have to also keep in mind that uh, you know if, if you do too much, too many different type of things. So proposition, when you derive proposition, it has to be scientific. It has to be either theoretical or testable. So you have to keep that in mind. It's hard to say which one is very popular. So I come across all these seven types of review articles. There are a lot of structured. Structured review articles get more citations. Of course, I mean, you can, you can have propositions also. Then if your propositions are testable, those papers get citations as well. 